Hey, this is uh, Nathan Das again. Uh, I'm making another video because I was requested to on how to assemble a Verge VZ. So this is one of mine and uh, I'm going to just put it together real quick and try and give you some uh, useful information on uh, key areas to look for and stuff. So first what we're going to do is grab the, uh, uh, the back plate here and uh, we're going to put the escapement wheel inside this guy over here. So you're going to feed the back end in first, slide the front in, then you're going to grab the little uh, back piece and put that in. Squeeze those together. Uh, one of the key pieces here is uh, the movement of the escapement wheel. See so back and forth. This isn't good. It needs to be as tight forward as it can be. You want the teeth as far forward so they engage right with the balance wheel. So we're going to try and press those together some more. Alright, now you can see that the escapement wheel is tight. That's good to start out, as long as it's not too tight. What you then do is grab the back with your tweezers and you're just going to slightly wiggle it until the escapement wheel is free. It needs to be as tight as possible but just free to spin as well and as far forward as possible. So now there's very little movement. That means the teeth are going to engage really well with the balance staff. So you're going to put that aside. We're then going to put the rest of the watch together. This is the easy part. Putting all the pieces back where they belong. Presumably uh, you've clean the fusey cone and taken out the back and cleaned the inside. You don't have to in some cases, but these watches being 200 years old, there is likely no good um, grease or oil on the inside of a fusey cone, so it's a good idea to clean them out and put all new oil in there. It's a little bit time consuming though, so I'm not including that. All right, so we got the movement basically together. We're now going to put the back plate on. And you're going to just have to line everything up. When you put it together, it's not normally too difficult. Alright, now it's together. This part, uh, I use the same pins if I can, otherwise you can use brand new pins to put it all back together. Just can be a waste of time cutting all new pins sometimes. Although if they're loose, then you need new ones. But I will deal with those later. If the pins are loose, definitely make new ones. You don't want them falling out later. This one here is probably pretty loose. So might as well replace that. Okay, now we're going to go through uh, the slightly more difficult part of putting the chain on. This is the way I do it. I find it's the easiest. So you're going to look for the 
the slot that the chain inserts into and you're going to pick up the chain and look for the right hook so there's two hooks on a fusey chain hopefully the camera can show you a little bit I don't know, see if I can focus on it okay it's pretty hard to focus one has um, an extra little tail on it and that's the one for the barrel the other one's just a smaller hook and that's for the uh, fusey cone make sure you oil the uh, chain the worst is when you open up a watch and uh, the chain is being all rusted together all the links should be nice and smooth slight humidity could easily rust and fuse some of the chain links together All right, so I got the chain uh, untangled. Okay, so I've inserted the hook. Now the key is to keep rotating the barrel and winding the chain on and not letting the hook slip out. Uh, I usually use a key for this job. for the post there you go, you can use the key and wind the fusey chain on if the chain falls off you gotta carefully pull the chain back out sometimes you might have to take the watch apart to do that is the hook can get jammed and you don't want to force it. So I always keep my finger on top of the fusey chain so that there's just a little bit of pressure keeping it uh, there instead of letting the barrel move on its own. Now the careful part of maneuvering the uh, second hook onto the fusey cone. See if I can... All right, there we go. So you can see the chain there. There's a tiny pin in the fusey cone you gotta get it to hook onto. There we go. Okay, so it's hooked on there. And you can use the key again to get the pressure in there. Alright, and ease it back. Now we have to put on the ratchet gear, this guy here. Never let your uh, your finger release pressure of the barrel yet, or you'll let the chain fall off again, which is such a pain. All right, so now you have the, the gear on there. There's a few different ways of doing this. Some watches you can use a key to get the pressure locked. Some watches you can't, in which case you're gonna have to use tweezers or something. Or uh, I've found sometimes a pair of. Yeah, this one's not gonna work. Okay, so you can use your tweezers. If they're not fragile tweezers, I wouldn't use like really high quality tweezers for this. And you can just get a few notches in there. And that's the pressure to secure the mainspring and the fusey cone and the chain together so that none of them ever come off. So the purpose of the, of the chain 
is so that uh, the mainspring is never fully unwound and is never uh, overwound. So if you turn this ratchet too many times, you'll put uh, too much winding in the, um, the mainspring. And when you wind up the watch, you can end up breaking the, the fusey chain. There's a stop on the fusey cone uh, right in here. This little piece here is, is part of it. And there's a stop that it, uh, prevents you from ever overwinding the mainspring. If you put too much pressure in the barrel, uh, you'll shorten the mainspring too much. And uh, so as you're winding with the, the fusey cone and the fusey chain, the chain will snap under too much pressure. Same thing can happen if the chain is too short. Uh, if it's a proper length of chain, it should be all the way up the fusey cone, hit the stop, and the mainspring should still have uh, energy and room to spare left in it. So just watch that, make sure that the stop works properly. At this point in time, we gotta put the uh, balance wheel back in there. And uh, at this point, I might use my movement holder. I like to assemble things by hand a lot. Not everybody does. Also depends on uh, the quality you want to do, quality work. I take my watches apart a lot, so it doesn't matter to me. And uh, you'll notice I kept the screws inside this top piece here. Um, you don't have to, like especially if you've cleaned it, but it is incredibly important to memorize where the screws go. In these watches, they've been disassembled so many times that uh, the screw holes uh, are kind of memorized to the screws, or they could be so close to stripped that um, they'll strip the next time you put it together if you put the wrong screw in the wrong hole. So they're all handmade screws. They, they belong in the holes that they came in. So always put it back together that way. Okay, so now we're gonna put the balance wheel in. This part, um, you should have memorized where the hairspring needs to be. But I'll show you a trick I used for readjusting. Let's get the hairspring in place and uh, lightly pin it, don't permanently pin it in place. And put the balance cock on. Alright, so it's all moving in there, it's good. Screw it down. When you screw it down, always uh, put a little bit of pressure on the top to make sure the balance wheel doesn't pop out. Sometimes the balance cock can roll or move around and you'll then be putting a screw in and pop a pivot off uh, the balance wheel if you can't keep it in the right spot. All right, this is one of the last tricks and that is um, put some energy into the watch you have the right key on hand. Um, always watch the fusey cone and the, the chain, make sure it's going on right. You might have to readjust the, the chain on the barrel to make sure it doesn't skip um, a groove, like you don't want it to, to knock its way upwards. So just readjust it with your tweezers on the barrel as you're going, as you're winding for the first time. Every time after that, it'll always be in the right spot. Okay, so now we got some pressure in there, and the balance wheel should be swinging, but it's not. That's because there's uh, it's either not put in right or there's some interference. Um, yeah, it's just not in quite right, and that's quite normal. I use um, sometimes a small drill bit, uh, which is a nice smooth shaft, and you slide it in the wheel here, and 
And that's just going to prevent the energy from releasing when you uh, adjust the balance wheel again. This way, you don't have to fully unwind and rewind the watch all the time. Uh, okay, so the um, escape wheel on this one is too tight still. It's not letting any energy pass. This also works for readjusting your hairspring. The drill bit holds it there so you can repin and adjust and then put it back. You don't have to use a drill bit, you can use anything and then you can pull it out carefully and then the energy will be back engaged in the movement. So I'm just gonna move the little escapement wheel piece here. There we go. So now there's enough energy and it's starting to go. But I can hear it's not ticking right. It's it's off centered. So then you do that same thing. You put the drill bit in. You want to never have any pressure. Like don't press on the drill bit. Just wait until it stops working. That means it's in the right spot. There it goes. It's holding all the energy, keeping it away from the balance wheel. Disassemble it again, and you can move the hairspring a tiny bit. Make an adjustment. Repin. Always make sure the hairspring's not touching anything. You can pull the rod back out. Now it's going again. Okay, so it's still not perfect, but I'll adjust it later. Some other things uh, I'll mention. Um, uh, if the balance wheel isn't swinging very far left and right, it usually has to do with the, um, the balance wheel and the teeth being too far apart. You're going to want the teeth closer to the balance wheel so that uh, more energy gets into it. Same as if the watch is uh, so right side up is how a watch hangs in a pocket. That is when the balance wheel is directly um, against the escapement wheel. The escapement, escapement wheel always points up. The balance wheel will point down and uh, it should run its best. Upside down, a Verge Physio will run its worst because they'll separate. They'll be farther from each other. Um, that's pretty normal, but you can get it uh, quite well with a lot of adjustments. You can push them as close together. Your pivots could also be worn out, which is why it's more affected. Uh, typically, one of these Verges in good working order can be accurate within uh, about two minutes a day, depending on uh, how much your body's moving and how much you're affecting the balance wheel. Uh, a lot of my Verges are, are quite accurate. And uh, so if somebody says that their Verge is, you know, 10 to 20 minutes off per day, it usually means there's something wrong. Um, you can regulate it and get it much better than that. Uh, the teeth on the escapement wheel can wear out, and you'll need to re-sharpen those. The, um, the pivots are your biggest thing, and you might need to uh, put some bushings in. 
Anyway, that's pretty much the major stuff of getting one of these things back to working order. Um, I'll probably make another video later. Anyway, take care. Bye.